let's discuss muscles of pectoral region so in this category if i am talking about the muscles of pectoral region in this category i am going to discuss four muscles pectoralis major pectoralis minor subclavius and serratus anterior so if i talk about the location serratus anterior is forming the medial boundary or the medial wall of the axilla so but uh, for the ease of explanation we generally explain serratus anterior muscle in the pectoral region as it belongs to the medial uh, wall of axilla but it is explained here itself so let's discuss the muscles one by one so i would like to start with pectoralis major muscle so firstly i would like to explain with the help of this diagram and then we can go subsequent with each and every muscle so let me just enlarge this image so this is a schematic diagram to help you to understand the attachment of pectoralis major muscle so yes just see here okay now here we can outline in this diagram i am going to outline the clavicle this is which bone this is the collar bone or the clavicle bone so what you can appreciate that this is the clavicular part of the pectoralis major muscle so this is the clavicular head so clavicular head is originating so what you can appreciate in this diagram that this is the clavicular part and this clavicular part of the pectoralis major muscle is arising from the medial anterior aspect of the clavicle okay yes now if you will see the other part that is uh, the sternocostal part which is arising from the anterior aspect of the sternum and also from the ribs from the costochondral junction so actually it is arising from second to sixth costal uh, from the second to sixth ribs and also it arises from the anterior aspect of the sternum lateral anterior aspect of the sternum and few of its fibers also originates from the external oblique muscle aponeurosis okay so here this is the sternocostal part or the head of pectoralis major muscle so these are the two parts of the pectoralis major muscle having two heads one is the clavicular head which is arising from as you have seen in the diagram from the anterior medial aspect of the clavicle the sternocostal fibers from the anterior lateral aspect of the sternum also from the ribs second to sixth ribs and also it arises from the aponeurosis of exter external oblique muscle okay thereafter like see here this is a cadaveric image in which you can appreciate the whole attachment of the pectoralis major muscle and this pectoralis major muscle you can see it is having a wide origin but if you will see the insertion this is i for insertion it is inserting into the lateral lip of bicipital groove okay so where it is inserting it is inserting into the lateral lip of bicipital groove so here you can see in the humerus bone it is inserting and it is attached to the lateral lip of bicipital groove or intertubercular sulcus both are correct so this is about the attachments of pectoralis major muscle we have already discussed about the pectoralis major muscle the attachments that is the origin and insertion i would like to write it for you so that you are not going to forget it so please write down pectoralis major muscle origin so when i am talking about the origin the origin of pectoralis major muscle it is originating it is having two heads it is having the clavicular head which is originating from the anterior medial aspect of clavicle anterior medial aspect from the clavicle the sternocostal head the sternocostal head originates from anterolateral aspect of sternum the ribs that is from second to sixth rib also from the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle external oblique muscle now if i talk about insertion the insertion of the muscle is it is so it is having a wide origin but at the insertion level it is forming a uh, u shaped loop and get attaches to it is attached to the lateral lip of bicipital groove 
This bicipital groove is also called as intertubercular sulcus. So we have done with this attachments of the pectoralis major muscle. We are quite clear with this. Now, I would also like to tell you, so in this cadaveric image, we can again appreciate the pectoralis major muscle, which is highlighted in this cadaveric image. If I talk about its uh, action, so if I am going to talk about its action, the pectoralis major muscle, the pectoralis major muscle, clavicular head, clavicular part is causing flexion of arm and sterno costal part if i talk about sterno costal part the sterno costal part is causing adduction and medial rotation of arm so these are the two parts and i have summarized the action of both the two parts clavicular part is causing the action of flexion of arm sterno costal part is causing adduction and medial rotation of arm what about the nerve supply so please write down nerve supply. If I talk about the nerve supply, it is supplied by both medial pectoral nerve and that of LPN. What is that MPN and LPN? So it is medial and lateral pectoral nerve. So nerve supply is by MPN that is medial pectoral nerve and LPN that means lateral pectoral nerve. Now, we know that medial pectoral nerve is a branch of medial cord of brachial plexus have, will have the root value C8 and T1, lateral pectoral nerve branch of lateral cord of the brachial plexus and its root value is C5, C6 and C7. So, done with this, so we have done with the attachment, nerve supply and action of pectoralis major muscle. I would also like to show you an, another image, I would like to show you a two image, what you can see here. Here we can see that this anterior muscle, this muscle which you are seeing here, this muscle which you are seeing here, which is attached to the anteromedial aspect of the clavicle and uh, this is the pectoralis major muscle. Now sometimes on the anterior aspect of pectoralis major muscle, we have got a vertical slip of muscle fibers. Okay. Just anterior to it, we have got a vertical slip of muscle fibers which is running over it and this vertical slip of the muscle is called as the sternalis muscle that is rectus sternalis muscle. So, this is called as rectus sternalis muscle. So, these are not always present. It can be present in 10 to 20 percent of the uh, population or individual, the vertical slip of muscle lying onto the medial anterior aspect of pectoralis major muscle called as rectus sternalis. Why rectus? Because it is straight and lying close to the sternum, so rectus sternalis. So see here, I would also like to show you this diagram where you can appreciate this muscle. So can you see here, I am just highlighting it, this vertical slip of muscle which is running over the pectoralis major muscle. So you can see here the here in this diagram the areola and nipple has been kept intact why this this is the areola and the nipple area okay this has been kept intact so that you can have an idea of the anterior aspect of pectoralis major muscle this is the whole outline of the pectoralis major muscle which you are seeing and just on to the anterior aspect of this the muscle which is running vertically the fibers which you can see here is the muscle fibers for right rectus sternalis muscle present in 10 to 20 percent of the cases or individuals not always present now let's talk about the second muscle in this category that is the pectoralis minor muscle so again i would like to explain the origin insertion attachment of the pectoralis minor muscle here in this diagram you can appreciate that this is the first rib this is the second rib, this is the third, this is the fourth and this is the fifth rib. Okay. Okay. Now, so what you can see here at the costochondral junction of third, fourth and fifth. So at the costochondral junction of third and fourth rib, you can see three slips of the pectoralis minor muscle is originating and it is inserting on this process. What is this process? This is coracoid process of the scapula. So exactly at the coracoid process of scapula, this muscle is inserting. So what would be the attachment arising from third, fourth, fifth rib at the costochondral junction and inserting onto the coracoid?